Hi, it's Tim Kennedy, and uh, I'm the president of Sheepdog Response. I've uh, been in the military for, I don't know, pushing a couple of decades. I'm super old, and my entire time has been spe spent in the Special Forces community. And um, we're going to talk about dry firing today. Dry firing is practicing the fundamentals of marksmanship without actually shooting a bullet. So this is something that in my opinion, is the best way for you to improve as a shooter. So I'm gonna talk about some examples of dry fire drills. I'm going to show you some dry fire drills and then we'll, we'll talk about some training aids that, that facilitate um, dry fire training. So what is it? It's, it's picking a fundamental of marksmanship and drilling that thing. So that might be your reload, that might be your draw, that might be your trigger squeeze. That might just be movement with a pistol. All of those things, with um, repetition, you get better at. So if you want to have a cleaner trigger squeeze, that's probably not going to happen on the range just hammering rounds. That's something that you're going to have to go home and dry fire. Uh, your, dry, your draw is not going to get faster, smoother, or better when every time that you draw, you're getting like pop, immediate feedback from a target, um, you know, hit, hit some misses and dings on steel. Um, that's something that you're going to improve by just the repetitions of doing it slowly and smoothly and then gradually adding speed. Now, there are a ton of dry fire training aids out there. Um, you could, you can Google them now and you know, there's probably, I don't know, a hundred. Um, I, I prefer just to use my regular pistol. Um, I think it is important for you to be comfortable with manipulating it, um, carrying it, how it feels, how your grip feels. So um, I have other aids that I use sometimes, but I also have aids that I use specifically with my carry pistol. So when you're gonna be dry firing, the first thing that you have to do is to make sure that your weapon is in a safe condition for you to be able to train with it. Uh, Will, our director of security solutions, uh, our security consulting division of Sheepdog Response. He actually has a gun next to his desk at home that is his always drill gun. And you can be sure that even though it's always there and that's his drill gun, um, he still will clear that gun when he's gonna start doing work. Um, so I'm, this is, I've been out shopping today and this is what I've been carrying all day long. So I'm gonna pull my gun out and we're gonna clear it and then we'll get right into some examples of dry fire drills. Um, you always start loading and unloading the weapon the exact same. That is removing the source of fear and feed and making sure the weapon's clear. So even when you're dry firing, you wanna treat your weapon as if it's loaded. You wanna practice with that weapon, um, treating it like it's real, real. So you're gonna keep your finger out of the trigger unless you're actively engaged in a target and that your eyes are on your sights and your sights are on what you're aiming at. Um, if your finger stays straight and along the frame. Um, you never point that weapon at anything unless you want to destroy it. So while I'm going to be aiming small and missing small, I'm going to pick things on my wall that don't have my kids behind them, right? That my dog is not running behind. So I'm still practicing safely. Um, I'm noting the condition of my weapon at all times. And, um, you know, every time that you touch a firearm, you're going to treat it as if it's loaded. So knowing the condition of my firearm and treating it as if it's loaded is good because this weapon is loaded. And uh, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna clear it. So, you know, I have my tourniquets in here. I have like my wallet and cell phone and that jazz. And, and uh, this is actually a pretty cool fanny pack that we'll have at Sheep Guy Response um, that we designed. So move the source of feed, lock and clear. Three point check, chamber, Slide and magazine well. There's nothing in there. Um, so here is my clear, cleared weapon that I can do my work from. Um, now that's useless if I'm gonna pull out my magazines and my magazines have rounds in them. So um, make sure that your magazines are empty. I just have to dump some magazines because I need an extra mag. All right, um, so grip. Grip is something that is a failure point for people with any follow-on shots. 
If you have a clean trigger squeeze and good sight picture, the round is always going to go, the first round is always going to go exactly where you want it to go. Grip, stance, follow through, breath control, all of those things matter for all follow on shots. Um, and you can drill each of those fundamentals individually, uh, but grip, I, I think, is n a normal breaking point for a lot of shooters. So grip starts at the holster. So when your hand goes all the way here, this is when your grip starts. If your hand is gripping the gun incorrectly from the holster, you're going to have a poor grip that you're going to have to either recover from or you're going to have to ride a bad grip the whole entire time that you're shooting. So you can just work it on grip, not even working on draw. So like, I don't want to be like, well, oh, that's just like, that's not what we're doing here. We're working just on grip. So as I go to my, my, my um, holster, my support hand is going to go across my body and kind of chamber, like it wants to, you know, it's, it's that wallflower at prom that wants to go and dance with somebody on the floor, right? It's like maybe it's making eye contact with somebody. Definitely wants to get out there and party. That's what this hand's doing. It's moving all the way across your body and getting as close to your holster as you can so that crush grip from your support hand can start as close to the holster as possible. So as this hand comes over, look, it's, it's ready to get that good grip. This hand, because I have big ape hands, I have to open my thumb up to make room for my support hand to catch up. Now, as I press out, I'm gonna relax my shoulders, make sure my, I'm not turtlenecking, everything's relaxed. And as I press forward, that vice grip of those two hands coming together, Grip is complete. Holster. Again, I'm not working on my draw. I'm not working on speeding anything up here. I'm working on getting a perfect grip every time. I'm gonna look at the lines on my hands, make sure I had a good grip. Look, things look good. Do it again. The majority of the squeezing should be comes, coming from your support hands. Um, like people throw out percentages out there, 60, 70, 80%. I'm just going to say the majority is going to be squeezing with your support hand. That leaves your firing hand just to manipulate the trigger. Again, just making sure grip is starting at the holster and that crush grip is being started as close to my holster as possible and getting tighter as I go all the way out. So, crush grip, great fundamental practice. Um, drawing from the holster, few rounds of working on grip. Now I can start just by the phases. One to the holster, two point to down range, three support hand catches up to shooting hand, four full presentation. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three, four. It's a good time to talk about one of the training aids. So my slide is locked into the rear every time that I um, cycle it because the follower of my magazine and my magwell is pushing up on the slide lock. So we have a tool called the tap rack training aid right here. Super useful tool that you can drop into your magazine and it pushes that follower down. Now you can just drill without without your slide locking the rear. Oh look, teacup grip. Immediately I identify that I made a mistake. I'm not gonna drive on with a mistake, I'm gonna fix it. Or 
I'm just going to stop, reholster, because I'm drilling right now. I want to practice perfectly so I can apply the things that I've practiced perfectly into the real world. If you pack practice all jacked up, you'll perform all jacked up. Um, trigger squeeze. That is something that you really do need a tap rack training for. Uh, or you can get your magazine out. Um, the weight of the gun changes with the magazine in it. I like getting as close to kind of like real as I can. So trigger squeeze. This is a cert pistol. I like to work on trigger squeeze with this because, uh, you can see on this couch right here, as I put pressure on the trigger, this first light comes on and that means I'm at the wall, the breaking point of the trigger. And then when I squeeze, a second trigger comes out or a second light comes out when the trigger breaks. This is a great tool where um, if I'm picking something on the wall and it's going like this as I'm shooting, obviously I have a jacked up trigger squeeze. So what you want is the those two to stay perfectly flat as you squeeze the trigger so nothing moves. Um, this is useful, we'll pick uh, that keyhole right there. So the first light is gonna come on right at the base of it. And you're not gonna be able to see that with a good sight picture. Uh, but when you do shoot, you can set your camera up and film and you'll see that maybe this, as you go to squeeze the trigger, that first light is gonna jerk right as the other one breaks. Um, I'll show you some good trigger squeezes and bad trigger squeezes. Good, good. Good, good, bad, bad, super bad, super bad, ha! Um, so, great tool to adjust work on your trigger squeeze. You don't need any of that to do trigger squeeze work. You can just work with your pistol and look at your sights. And as, the, as that round breaks, you want the gun to stay perfectly fat, flat, the sights to stay on the target, and you to be able to see the last thing and remember the last thing that you saw as that round breaks. Oh, that's a bad one, right? That's the point of dry fire is that you can catch mistakes without an explosion happening in your hand and a projectile flying, flying down range at a few thousand feet per second. Um, so you can work on your grip, you can work on your draw, you can work on your trigger squeeze. The OODA loop is a great thing. So we have the four A's of shoot response. We have awareness, being aware of your surroundings, aware of yourself. Assessment is when you identify a threat, and you're kind of pouring some of your uh, concentration and attention into that one thing. And then action is when Something bad happens and you have to take, uh, res you have to respond to it. So that's where the OODA loop, OODA loop happens is at that A, the action A. So OODA loop is you observe that something's wrong. You have to orientate, orientate your body towards it. They have to decide to act and they have to act. So if I'm over here, there's a bad dude over there. I observe that there's a problem. I take my body and I point it towards it. Proprioception, making sure I'm a good shooting stance. My feet are pointing towards the target. My hips are pointing towards the target. My shoulders are pointing towards the target. And then lastly is act in the OODA loop. Now you can put that grip together. You can put the trigger squeeze together. And you can put the draw together. You can do that in every single direction. Observe, orientate, act, decide, and act. Guy. All right, um, you can, like, dry firing is really limited to your own creativity. You can watch movies, go watch John Wick and be in the gunfight. Like, it sounds dumb, but it's super fun, I promise. Um, it kind of ruins date night at home, but I'm not gonna throw stones. Uh, you could be working, have the TV on, 
watching a movie and every time a new character comes in, you'd be like, awareness gets tuned on. Is this a good guy, a bad guy? Oh, it's a bad guy. I have to act. So then you can like even practice the whole entire process of the four A's with the OODA loop into your grip, draw, side, side alignment, trigger squeeze, follow through. Um, so I said, tool wise, this tap rack training aid is very useful. So are dummy drills or dummy rounds. You, you can load your magazines with them. Um, you know, snap caps, if you're running a revolver in 1911, maybe don't do that. Buy a good striker fire so you can practice endlessly. Um, those are just four basic drills. There's a ton more that you can do. Um, these are ones that I do frequently just to make sure I'm comfortable with my pistol. Another fun one is, uh, I said, just practicing moving. So you can use your real gun. Like I have kids and uh, teenagers and a wife. So it's kind of weird if I'm walking around the house like playing with a gun. It's not a great example. So this is a cool tool where I can practice just moving around the house, around the kitchen. You know, I'm gonna move around Seth without flagging him. I can move down the hallway to my kid's room, um, open a door without, oh, I just flagged myself. Like getting comfortable just having a weapon in your hand and being aware, the more you do it, the more comfortable you're gonna be with it and the more you're gonna see. The first time that I ever went into a shoot house, man, I, it was like I was looking through a, like a keyhole into the, into, the, into the world, right? My, both my eyes were open, wearing body armor, helmet, like the, 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 the breach goes off, flashbangs are thrown in there, and I remember I could only see this much. After the 400th time that you've done it, you're like, now you can see this much. And then by the 10,000th time, it's just like, my soul is dead. I'm bored now. Maybe uh, you have to go back to training. Um, so train safe, but train. Make sure that you are being very precise and you're clearing uh, to begin your training. No accidents under any circumstances, but uh, training is paramount. And dry firing is really, in my opinion, the way that you're going to get better with a firearm. Anyways, thanks for watching and um, tell everybody about Shoot Dark Response.